Uh, he was good friend of him, and uh, Vincent also had come to Johnson and Johnson for a job. That's what he said. Mr. Atavale was the production manager that time, and uh, just before Muchavala, yeah, Atavale, and then uh, that time Archie Sikpera was our. Uh, uh, at the same time I joined. I joined in 1982, and he had come in 1981. So it's a small world. Then of course I met him during Bombay Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, meetings. Also, Bombay Management Associations, we were connected together. Uh, and then LinkedIn. I think uh, those who uh, are me members of LinkedIn, uh, not Twitter per se, but Twitter, I find it very too political. So, the particular LinkedIn and Facebook is very personal, very small, close friend of 300 maybe. But LinkedIn is something which gives you a lot of access to very highly qualified people. Although many times it is only used for good morning and good and we are best of best wishes, etc. I have written to LinkedIn. Please stop all that because you know too much of congratulations and that goes on LinkedIn. But anyway, sometimes people like uh, that congratulation and message uh, that is left to them. So we have today with us uh, Vincent, and uh, he is from VJTI, my institute, uh, which is just next to UD City. Myself, Suhas from UD City, and. Uh, he had a number of years of corporate, corporate experience before starting his own consultancy. Vincent, that the floor is yours. And uh, please take us through the how we can improve our presentation skills. I know we are not as good, but uh, we would like to learn. Thank you so much for coming here all the way. And uh, the mic is yours now. Thank you. Okay, good evening friends. Thank you Dr. Kelka for inviting me here to this session. And I hope we can have a nice learning experience together. Yeah, because this particular presentation is also being, you know, viewed by YouTube, uh, you know, viewers. Uh, we will try and take all the questions towards the end of the uh, presentation that I have. Yeah, so please bear with me. I'll give you a soft copy of this PPT so you don't need to worry about taking down any notes and we can stay connected even after the program is over. I'm not an expert in presentation skills and I always believe that if you want to learn something new, you must find someone who is just two steps ahead of you. Because if you find a guy who's 20 steps ahead of you, you may never get a chance to learn too much yeah, in the process. And I hope that in my interaction with you, I will also pick up a few things that are very important in this very critical life skill. So all of us know in life that we are blessed with a very high level of intelligence. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been where we are today. We are also blessed with the technical expertise that we need to have. Some of us could have specialized in accountancy. Many of us have studied engineering. But some research at the Harvard Business School many years ago indicates that only 15% of our success in life is due to our technical skills. Almost 85% of success is due to our soft skills. And those soft skills include our communication skills, our people skills, more importantly, recently, emotional intelligence, conflict management, and all these skills which are very critical. So in this short uh, session today of 75 minutes, I will try and focus on some of the important dimensions of presentation skills which are very, very important. Now this slide is a bit scary, but it's a word of caution for all of us. It basically tells us that Lee Iacocca many years ago said that sharp brains and brilliant minds alone will not assure success to any professional unless he or she can sell his or her ideas in a very persuasive manner. Today when I go to the top consulting companies, to the top FMCG companies around the world, I sometimes see so many chartered accountants, so many engineers stuck in their career. And there are people with MBA degrees moving far ahead of them just because their presentation and their communication skills are far superior. The careers of many engineers and accountants with great talent never took off because they could not present what they want in a very convincing manner. 
and that is where this particular skill becomes very very critical you know some of our parents when we were children in school they forced us to go to nazareth speakers academy they forced us to go to indo american society during the summer breaks because they realized how important public speaking and presentation skills are ultimately to our success in the corporate world today we have a lot of youngsters who have joined international schools where there are just 12 students in the class and three teachers and the teachers get enough of opportunities to expect their children to come forward and make presentations every now and then yeah and that is where you know the field of education is also adding value in certain sectors to this particular skill which is very very critical so in my presentation today this is broadly the content i will talk about how to plan organize and structure a presentation how to overcome speaking fear and nervousness which is very often felt by many of us how to design and use visual aids effectively how to deliver your ideas and your messages with impact how to select stories and illustrations while trying to depict your message some presentation etiquettes in terms of do's and don'ts that you must honor how to handle the q and a session which is the most difficult part for many people during the presentation and how to handle difficult situations like when you don't have an answer to a particular question that is raised by the audience or you are faced with a very hostile audience you are the ceo of a company which has performed very badly during the year and a lot of people are very aggravated and they want to make sure that short of throwing rotten eggs and tomatoes they are going to make your life quite difficult during the presentation and then sometimes of course you may be asked to speak on the spot or you may be asked to actually conduct a team presentation you know if i play table tennis with you i am in total control of the game but if i have a doubles partner with whom i have never played before then there has to be certain amount of synergy if we are to ultimately play a good game are you with me friends that's where team presentations become much more difficult so what do all these people friends have in common what does virat kohli have in common with roger federer amita bachchan Madonna what do all these people have in common yeah solo players okay what else they are highly skilled okay many of us will say they are rich they are very famous they are tops in their field but they all have the humility to plan prepare and practice before they perform so the four p's of a good presentation are you must have the humility to plan you must have the capacity to prepare you must have the desire to practice and ultimately you have to have the guts to perform when you ultimately are on stage so what is the pyramid of communication success if i am to make bread the most critical ingredient is maida or wheat similarly for a good presentation the most critical ingredient is knowledge a lot of people tell me vincent i attended your time management course it was very nice can you please come and conduct a small session on stress management because we loved that part of the segment in your presentation and i say you know friend actually i don't have more information on stress management other than what i have covered so far yeah and i am not able to manage my own stress so how will i actually do a session on stress management so one word of caution is some of us especially who have very good delivery skills may be tempted to accept any invitation to talk on any topic which i think is sometimes a mistake would you agree with me yeah because people want to find value you may not be able to give 100% value to everyone in the audience because a lot is dependent on how much of knowledge they have on the subject but you have to make sure that you have the authority to be able to talk on a particular topic when you put your hand up and offer to make a presentation so the most important ingredient is you must have a set of compelling ideas and solutions because people come to listen to you because they either have a pain or they have a goal you know most of my training programs are in the field of sales okay so whenever i go to any client to understand how they want to improve sales performance i have to talk to the client only in terms of two words sir what is the pain that you currently have in the organization right now and the ceo will sometimes say vincent i have no pain we are growing at 30% but i have a very ambitious goal to grow at 100% next year 
So either there is a pain or there is a goal. There is no third reason why I will be called by any organization to do a training course. And when a customer has a pain, unless I have a solution, I'm not going to be able to add value. Are you with me, friends? So therefore, it's very important to make sure that you have a compelling set of ideas and solutions. Once you have those ideas and solutions, you have to put pen to paper and plan, prepare and practice. What will happen when you do this? You will automatically gain in confidence. What will happen when you are very confident when you speak? You will automatically create conviction that you are the right person to deal with in terms of the solution that the client is looking for. And then ultimately with your conviction, both people win. You win, I win. And both of us feel very happy about whatever we have ultimately achieved. So what are typical presentations? You know, very often when I meet engineers, they say, Vincent, but you know, I don't have to stand before a group and speak. But research shows that if you can stand before a group and speak, even your one-to-one -one communication with people undergoes a tremendous amount of lift. Public speaking is the ultimate test of confidence. And there are many dimensions of public speaking that we sometimes encounter in business. You may have a morning huddle. Like for example, there is a company in Vikroli where the CEO enters the office at 8.30 in the morning. For 15 minutes, he will have a huddle with all the vice presidents. 8.45, the vice presidents go into their cabin and have a huddle with all the general managers. General managers call all the managers and have a huddle for 15 minutes. And at 9.30, the whole company is operating at top speed. Huddle is what you see even before a cricket game starts or a football match starts, where all the players hold each other, motivate each other, and try to make sure that they are focused on what they have to achieve. A client pitch definitely requires presentation. Appearing at an industry conference where you are the speaker and you have got the company's brand in your hand, is a very important part of presentation. Running a meeting requires very good presentation skills. Would you agree with me? Today, the moment the boss says meeting, everybody says margaya. Because people say a meeting is a place where minutes are kept and hours are lost. And that is why I have some client companies like HUL and Citibank, where managers are not allowed to call a meeting in the company unless they have attended a three hour course on how to conduct effective meetings. Because when you go into some very big organizations, the cost of a meeting itself could run into several crores of rupees. When you take the per minute salary that you pay the top executives in the organization. And then of course, briefing a boss definitely requires good presentation. Would you agree with me? You've gone for a trip to China, you've spent seven days there, the boss calls you into his cabin and wants a briefing in the next five minutes of what were the outcomes that were actually achieved. So public speaking, friends, requires a lot of qualities, which I'm sure all of you have seen at some point of time. Most important is credibility. And that is why all speakers like to be introduced before they start the session because you automatically tell people in the audience you are in safe hands. This guy has worked like all of us and is definitely going to add value to all of us in the process. You have to be dynamic. In other words, don't stand in one place. See if you can move around a little bit, especially when you're communicating, if it is possible, especially when there is no video recording so that you're not locked up in one particular spot. You have to feel comfortable. If you're very nervous, and the audience is also not feeling comfortable with your style of speaking, that's not going to make a very effective presentation. Most important, you have to be very enthusiastic because what is a dictionary definition of a presentation? You're selling your ideas to the audience. And selling requires a lot of enthusiasm. So unless you're, of course, talking about a small condolence meeting, in most of the cases, you need to make sure that you're enthusiastic about the ideas that you're trying to give to the audience. Most important, you need to be knowledgeable. All of you understand that a bit of humor, especially if you're a speaker just after lunch, is going to make sure that the audience remains connected with you. Most important part of a presentation is good eye contact. One of the biggest problems we see presenters face in the world is that they tend to read the slides 
and the audience feels very hurt because they say even we learned reading in third standard. Just give us the PPT at the end of the presentation and we'll do the reading ourselves. Always remember that when you make a presentation, the sli slide is not meant for the presenter. The slide is meant for the audience. Just to tell them, don't feel bored, I'm making progress. See, I'm moving from one place to another. I'm moving from one slide to another. And sooner or later, we'll come to the end of this particular discussion. Eye contact is very, very critical. Make sure that you modulate your voice a little bit. There are times in the presentation where you must raise your voice. And there are certain times where you could drop your voice to be able to create the right kind of impact. I'll demonstrate that in another slide. Okay, now in addition to public speaking, there are some additional elements which are very important, especially when you get into presentations. Most important, you need to have a very clear set of objectives. What do I want the audience to think, feel and do as a result of my presentation? You need to focus at the right level. So audience analysis becomes very important. Their age, education, demographics, their pain areas, etc., etc. You need to have a visual aid. If you're in public speaking, there's no need of visual aid. But if you're called for a presentation and you go without visual aids, sometimes people will feel disrespected because they will feel you did not put enough of preparation effort in the entire thing. It has to have a logical flow. In public speaking, I can always say, I'm sorry, I forgot one point. Let me go back to something which I should have said earlier. But with a PPT in front of you, you cannot be going back and forth and saying, I forgot to tell you something which I should have covered earlier. You have to use current material. Don't use data or any information that is outdated. Your presentation should stimulate questions. In fact, the more questions that arise during the presentation, the greater is the quality of impact. You need to give sound examples. Don't take extreme cases and try to talk about it, because otherwise you run the risk of the audience getting into an argument with you. Most importantly, in a presentation, you have to be extremely time sensitive. OK, now let me ask you a question. Let's say, for example, I've got a 20-minute presentation. And I've got 10 slides. And unfortunately, after 15 minutes, I'm still stuck on slide number three. Because people are asking a lot of questions. Now from slide number three, I want to jump to slide number nine. How can I jump without the audience knowing? OK, my question to you is, I've got a 20-minute presentation. I've got 10 slides. Unfortunately, after 15 minutes, I'm still stuck on slide number three. From slide three, I want to jump to slide number nine without the audience knowing. How do I jump without the audience knowing? Anyone can help me? Let me ask this question. Let me answer this question you have raised. I'm going straight to some other slide now just to answer your question. And then from there, move on. Yeah, but then the audience will see all these and they are going to be very agitated to say, you know, I think Murthy is his friend. He unnecessarily spent so much of time explaining that extra stuff and now he's depriving us of something which is very important. Now, tonight when you open your laptop, I would like you to open your PPT. Now, if I want to move to slide number nine, all I need to do is take my finger, press number nine, press enter, automatically slide number nine will come. I want to go to slide 14. I press one, four, enter. Automatically slide number 14 will come. So whichever slide you want to go to, you just need to press that number on your laptop, press enter, and automatically the slide moves to that particular level. Yeah? The problem today in the world is many of us don't use PowerPoint the way it was designed to be used. A lot of us have smartphones, but I'm sure not many of us use all the features of the smartphone. Would you agree with me? You take that phone and give it to your small son at home. He, he will start pressing all the buttons. He knows dad's phone has got the warranty. And he'll say, dad, I'll show you how to use it. Yeah? So therefore, I always tell people, if you're not married, get married fast. Yeah? If, you're not, if you don't have a kid, get a kid fast. Otherwise, rent a kid. But make sure that you have somebody around you who will actually help you to feel comfortable with technology and use it in an effective way. Supposing I want to blank out the slide. I just press a button, the slide gets blank. 
I press the button again, the slide comes where. So what is the button you have to press on the laptop? It is B. Supposing I'm making a presentation and nobody has given me a whiteboard. On the laptop, I just press W. The whole screen becomes a whiteboard. And then I can write. So I'm going to give you a box of tricks, which are just summarized in one page, that you can just press when you go home and then try and see the beauty of PowerPoint, which was there right from the beginning when it was given to us. But unfortunately, we have not used it the way it is supposed to be used. Because any presentation that goes beyond a particular point is going to frustrate the audience. Would you agree with me? Yeah. And that is why whenever I go for a presentation, sir, just excuse me, I always carry my clock with me. Yeah, And I try and keep it here. I was so very happy when I saw that clock. But then when I stood here, I could see I can't see the clock. So therefore, I then took out my clock from the bag and put it over there. Yeah. So the important thing is, it's important to make sure that you don't overshoot the time because today time is a very precious commodity for everyone. So I've covered the four P's of a good presentation. Now I'm giving you a fifth P. The fifth P is called postmortem. At the end of every presentation, you must ask yourself, WWW, what went well? WCBI, what can be improved? If you don't like CBI for some reason, write WWW, what went wrong? But I think wrong is a slightly negative word. So WCBI is still my favorite. What can be improved? Yeah, It's very, very important, my dear friends, for you to do your own self-evaluation. Because although you will get feedback from the audience, you know exactly what you wanted to cover and what you eventually did. So you have to be your toughest critic in terms of trying to improve your own capabilities. Even in a country like America, public speaking is the number one fear. People have a fear of heights, people fear insects, people fear financial problems, people fear deep water, people fear sickness, death is a distant seven, people fear flying, people fear loneliness, people fear dogs. So even in a country like the US, public speaking is the number one fear. So if you have a fear of public speaking, remember you are not alone. Everyone in this world has it. The good news is that great speakers aren't born, they are trained. Public speaking is a skill that is developed through experience and training. You cannot learn public speaking by reading a book. You might buy Dale Carnegie's book, How to Be a Good Public Speaker. But if you just sit at home and read the book and expect that you will be good at it, it might not help you beyond a particular point. Always remember to cope with nervousness. Fear is natural. Try to convert it into power. A certain amount of fear is good because as Amitabh Bachchan says, I don't fear. In my dictionary, I've converted the word fear into focus. I converted the word fear into concentration. So when you're a little nervous, it's good because it helps you to focus, it helps you to concentrate, it helps you to forget all your other worries of life so that you do a fantastic job when you're actually making a presentation to the audience. Always make sure that you focus on what you are saying. Don't focus on whether the audience is liking you or not. There are going to be one or two people in the audience who will be looking at you like this. And when you look at them, you start getting worried, saying, I think he doesn't like my presentation. And at the coffee break, he will say, sir, lovely presentation. <laughs> yeah, and then you say, friend, the way you were looking at me when I was speaking, I thought I was standing on the highway with a truck coming in front of me. It's just that some people have that expression. Or they are very worried about something else that is not going on very well in their life. So from today onwards, you will never judge the quality of your presentation by looking at whether the audience looks happy or not. Especially when you're learning to do it effectively. Would you agree with me? Supposing your wife wants to learn to drive a car. She has got a license. And she says, I would like you to be my coach. What are you going to tell her? Just focus on the clutch and the brake and a few things. The rest of it I will take care of. If you try to see whether you're driving as well as the other drivers, then that's going to create a problem for you and the nervousness will only go up. Make sure that you talk to the team as if they are your friends. And that is why when you're making a presentation, I always recommend try to reach 40, 45 minutes early. 
shake hands with a few people who have come early you never know you might meet somebody who has worked with you in the same company who has studied with you in the same school in college so in the initial few moments when you are a little nervous you can focus on these guys who will be smiling nodding and hoping that you will succeed and then you will automatically get the eng uh, the energy to be able to take off last of all always have a backup plan in place would you agree with me see that your presentation is on the laptop see that it is on the pen drive see that it's on a beautiful sheet of paper which i called as a reminder card which i will send you and in many companies when i conduct a session i give this reminder card which is very beautifully laminated and when you see it you love it and people carry that laminated card in the bag for the next 10 years and whenever they meet me they say vincent you know i still have that card on all the steps i need to follow when i visit a doctor when i visit a chemist when i visit a distributor to ensure that we get the right kind of business from each of these segments yeah so it's very important because see this ppt i will send you on your email but you're not going to open it more than once would you agree with me some of you may not open it at all <laughs> yeah so the thing is that a reminder card always helps you to actually do it well always see yourself as being very helpful see yourself as being well prepared and most important see yourself as being in control so what give confidence you must believe in yourself and you must approve of yourself there are 10 affirmations you must say in your mind before you start a presentation so i always say the standard of presentations in the world are very low in other words with a little bit of effort i can do a fantastic job the audience here wants me to succeed i look better than i feel i may be feeling very nervous inside but nobody can notice that would you agree with me and even if something is shaking let it shake today people are going to shamak dawar to learn how to shake if it's happening automatically you have automatically saved 10000 rupees and you feel so good about that capability i am well prepared okay and my ideas are sound i am a very capable person the audience is lucky to be here listening to me it is not terrible if something goes wrong the audience need not approve everything that i do or say i need not be perfect in every way even surya kant yadav scored three consecutive zeros yeah with all his talent and capability golden ducks so what is there if i fail once in a way and last of all i say pranoy roy is great but i am good So the moment you say these ten things in your mind before you start a presentation, provided you do number four, which is I am well prepared, your presentation will automatically flow in the way it is supposed to flow. Always be familiar with the environment. You know, I still remember Mr. Murthy saying, Vincent, if it is possible, no. come let's go to the hospital one day earlier to see the room and to see, you know, whether everything is fine. and i said yes mr murthy i would love to do that i never go to a presentation unless i visit the venue the previous day just to make sure that i am comfortable in that particular place but then the next morning when i said what time do we go i got a message saying i'm not well then i said it's better not to make that request but it's always good to be familiar with the environment next look good and feel relaxed if you dress appropriately and well people will focus on your presentation if you dress badly people will focus on your dress would you agree with me so that is why when you are presenting you don't always have to wear a suit and a tie but it's always nice to ensure like narayan murthy says see that your dress is appropriate see that your dress is conservative so that nobody feels hurt with the quality of attire that you have the next is always use your own script a lot of people tell me vincent after every presentation you always give your powerpoints to everyone don't you think it's a risk some of them will take your powerpoint and start making the presentation on their own and i say no friend that cannot happen my powerpoint will have only 5% of what actually comes out of my mouth would you agree with me so therefore there is no way that anybody can take my powerpoint which i use over a two day program 
and be able to maybe run a session of more than 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. Always look at yourself as a pro. Consider yourself to have a privilege, responsibility and opportunity to showcase the wonderful personality that God has given each one of us. A presentation is an opportunity to showcase the most beautiful personality that God has given to each one of us. So when Dr. Kelkar called me, I considered it to be a privilege because I was fortunate that the date was available for the session. Yeah, responsibility to prepare, an opportunity to meet you and many new friends who might have studied with me or worked with me in companies before. How do we communicate? It's very important to be selective about the words you use, the grammar that you use. You don't have to be perfect. When I was in school many years ago, in third standard at OLPS, my Renan Martin used to be 465 pages. Today it has come down to 148 pages. So English language has become simpler. My teacher used to shout at me, you cannot use wood, you have to use could. Today's teacher says wood and could is okay. As long as he has understood, <laughs> don't worry too much about it. Yeah. So English language has been simplified, has become so easy. You just has, have to avoid the hundred common mistakes that sometimes in India we make because we think in our local language and translate it into English. Like for example, you never introduce yourself with myself is Vincent. That's a local language translation into English. You will have to say, I am Vincent or Vincent De Silva is my name, but not myself is Vincent. So you just eliminate those hundred small errors and you can be fantastic in terms of the presentation impact you make. Your body language has got 55% weightage. Your facial expression has to look positive. Before you start a presentation, always make sure that you wet your lips. We men are very unlucky. We don't have lipstick, we don't have lip gloss. So you have to use natural lipstick, which is saliva. Yeah. Also, like I tell the youngsters, whenever you are entering the boss's cabin, always make sure that before you enter a boss's cabin, see that you wet your lips. You will always look more positive, more dynamic. But see that you do it before entering the cabin. Don't enter the cabin while doing like that. Boss will wonder which training you attended. Yeah. So, but see, you have to make an effort to look positive. Would you agree with me? Not all of us are blessed with a very smiley or a very friendly face. So therefore, your facial expression has to look positive. Unless, of course, it's a condolence speech where you might want to bring in a tinge of sadness in terms of your expression. Make sure that you make good eye contact. If you're talking to a large audience, divide the audience into four quadrants. Look in that direction, they are okay. Look in that direction, they are okay. Look in that direction, they are okay. Look here, they are okay. Now start again. The last time I will looked at him, this time I will look at him. I need to spray the audience with my eye contact. When a man is talking to another man, look eye contact three to four seconds before you shift. Man to a lady, little less, two to three seconds. Otherwise, the lady will say, I only came for the cause. Vincent was looking at me all the time. So therefore, sometimes you have to dilute your eye contact depending on the, organ the, the audience that you are talking with. Make sure that you are standing comfortably. Today, fortunately, I have a mic, so my hands are a little locked. But sometimes you may be speaking without a mic. So then the problem is what to do with your hands. Don't keep your hands don't keep it like this, no good. Don't keep it like this, no good. So there are many things that we do with our hands which are not very, very appropriate. Some put their hands in the pocket and after some time the hands start jingling in the pocket. And people are asking what's the score. So it creates a lot of confusion. Yeah. So therefore you have to make sure that your posture is appropriate so that you are able to make an impact. What is the best place in the world to learn public speaking or presentation skills? Best place in the world to learn presentation or public speaking skills. There's an organization in the US which is there across the world today, including Mumbai. It's called Toastmasters International. Have you heard of it? Yeah, I'll give you their website. They have got some fantastic videos which you can download free of cost. And see, each of those videos lasts for four and a half minutes. Two to four and a half minutes is the maximum. But you can learn all the little, little things that are very important to be able to create a good impact. Make sure that your gestures are appropriate. Be careful, certain gestures in some countries are not allowed. 
For example, in India, we make a gesture like this, especially on WhatsApp. It means fantastic, great, awesome, brilliant. But in France, if you do this, it means you're a big zero, no intelligence. In Japan, if you do this, it means I want money. And in Germany, if you do this, it could mean you're a homosexual. So the same gesture in different countries can have different meaning. In most countries, including India, this means thumbs up, keep it up, fantastic, awesome. But in some countries, it's a vulgar gesture, shove it up. Yeah, so you have to be cautious in terms of gestures that you make. Sometimes when you're speaking, if there is too much of gesture like that, people may not feel comfortable. Unless, of course, you're a politician, where people might feel that you're very confident about what you're saying. But otherwise, you have to be careful about certain gestures. The most important part also is your vocal communication. Don't talk too fast, especially if you talk the South Indian languages at home. You have to slow down because otherwise people will not understand your speech. Pitch, there's not much you can do, but make sure that you're not screaming or shouting so that the people feel offended. Power, always speak in a slightly louder volume. But the most important part is modulation. And then, of course, most important, whenever you speak, learn to pause. Some of us have a habit, we use words like and, ah, uh, basically, basically. Engineers are favorite for actually, basically, yeah? Or some people have a habit of, you know, we have an Indian cricket manager in Delhi. His name is Madan Lal. He has a very serious problem of, you know. The Indian cricket team, you know, needs a batsman, you know, who can bowl, you know, and can field, you know. So they call him Madan Lal, you know. You know? So if there are too many you knows, basically, you know, people may sometimes feel uh, a little uncomfortable with those filler words that are used. So how do you get rid of filler words? In the good old days, it used to cost 40,000 to get rid of it. You had to buy a Sony camera like this and then record yourself and see the mistakes you're making. But today it is free. Would you agree with me? Yeah, just tell your child, Bitta, I'm making a speech which I'm supposed to give next week. Yeah, can you please record me for five minutes? And in five minutes, you will get feedback. What are the problems that you have in terms of filler words? For any change to happen in the world, the first requirement is awareness. Would you agree with me? Then you must have attitude. No, it is not looking good. I have to remove this. Then you must articulate. What are you specifically going to do to avoid this problem? Yeah? Research shows that 55% of your effectiveness as a communicator depends on your body language. All of you are feeling tired? Okay. Just put your right hand forward, right hand, do exactly as I tell you, right hand, do exactly as I tell you. With your finger and thumb, make a little circle, do exactly as I tell you. Pull your hand back slowly towards your face, do exactly as I tell you. Pull your hand back slowly towards your face and put it on your chin. Pull your hand back slowly towards your face and put it on your chin. Where is your chin, friends? Chin is here. Yeah. So what happened? Whenever there is a confusion between verbal and non-verbal, people will always believe the non-verbal message. That is why your body language has to be fabulous. To be able to make a good presentation, you have to pay the price. And the price stands for you have to prepare well, you have to build a certain amount of rapport with the audience, you have to be incisive, every second is critical. People are today looking for roti. They are not looking at ROI anymore. When I used to work earlier, people used to say, what's the ROI? People are asking today, roti. What is the return on time invested? I'm going to invest one hour of my time with you, Vincent. Would I get enough of value for the loss of time that has taken place in my life? Okay. Make sure that you are in control and most importantly, see that you are enthusiastic. If you are in an international presentation, there are some things which are very important. Eye contact in America is very critical. If you are talking to an American, one to one, you have to look at his eyes 70% of the time. If he's a Britisher, 60%. If he's an Arab, 50%. If he's an Indian, 40%. If he's a Japanese, 30%. Japanese don't like strong eye contact. If you make strong, strong eye contact with the Japanese, he perceives you to be aggressive. If you don't make eye contact with the American while talking, he appears, he, he thinks you don't have the confidence when you are communicating. So sometimes your eye contact varies from culture to culture. 
Sometimes when you're discussing with a Chinese, negotiating with him, you'll suddenly see he's suddenly closing his eyes. And you start to begin to feel, is he feeling bored? So you'll say, sir, would you like to have some water? But actually he's not feeling bored. He's almost taking a decision that he will, he will go ahead with your proposal. So they close their eyes before they actually decide. They are in deep concentration to say, have I looked at all the bases? Have I evaluated all the pros and cons? I think it's time for me to go ahead. So if you don't read the body language properly, you could be in a little bit of trouble. Saudi Arabia or Arab countries, they like to stand very close to each other when they talk. Just half an arm away. So if you move away, he will come closer. The Japanese like to stand two arms away. The Americans like to stand one arm away. So when American and Japanese are talking to each other, there is a challenge. If they enter the room there, after 10 minutes, they will be there. Because every time the American goes closer, the Japanese will move further. Yeah, it's the concept of zone, space and distance, which you need to be good at. Germans don't like humor, especially during 9 to 5. They want to be very serious about whatever they are trying to do. And if you try to joke around too much, they may not be very comfortable. Winking in Hong Kong is considered to be rude. So a little bit of this reading has to be done, especially when you are in an international presentation. How do you plan and organize a presentation? Select the date, time and the venue for the presentation. Don't select Monday or Friday. Monday people are just coming out of the weekend. Friday people are getting ready for the next weekend. So Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is probably the right time when you should visit a client for a sales presentation. What is the best time of the day to visit a client? Preferably 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, supposing you're going for a job interview. What is the best time to go for an interview? 11 o'clock in the morning. Because that is the time when the interviewer will be at his very best in terms of evaluating you. Of course, if you've got a lot of ATKTs in college, then you ask for 5 o'clock in the evening. Because by that time, he is so tired that he might forget to see some of the gaps and some of the problems that are there. So selecting of the time slot also is very critical for you in terms of impact. If I'm called for a presentation where there are lots of speakers lined up, a lot of time I would prefer the slot at 11 o'clock, but they say, no, no, Vincent, we have deliberately kept you just before lunch or just after lunch because we know you will be able to add humor in terms of what you are trying to speak. Make sure that you tap information and review opposing ideas. Many years ago, I was making a presentation on business process re-engineering. So therefore, what will I cover? What is re-engineering? How it is done? What are the steps to be followed? Which companies have succeeded? And what kind of results they've got? But there's one person in the audience who will say, Vincent, there is a company in Thane. They went in for BPR and then the whole company got into trouble. Why do you think it happened? Now, I may not know why that company has failed, but I have to say, sometimes it can go wrong because A, B, C factors were not probably taken into account. Are you, are you with me, friends? So you have to make sure that you anticipate the kind of questions that are going to come and be ready with that, especially when you're presenting. Always select key ideas in terms of features and benefits for the audience. What is going to appeal to them most? And always keep it digestible. In other words, what are the slides I will definitely cover? What I should cover in case there is a question from the audience? and what I could cover in case the next speaker doesn't turn up. Like I was working like all of you in a manufacturing plant and we used to have a lot of new engineers who used to join every year and the HR team wanted to do an induction program. My boss used to always be asked to conduct the program, Mr. Dixit. But Mr. Dixit used to be so engrossed in his own work and other things that he would say, Vincent, I'm sorry, I can't go, can you go? And I was quite happy to go and I went there because I wanted to make friends with HR because appraisals are also due very soon. So I started enjoying that. Then I started getting called by business schools like SPJ and Narsi Munji. And from that particular field that I was in, I eventually got into training and consulting. Yeah. So these are things, friends, that planning is very important. Make sure that you define the objectives create your opening. That should take 7.5% of your time. Opening 7.5%, closing 7.5%, body 65%. What is the balance? 20% should be left for Q&A for the audience. Yeah? Basically, that is it. The most important part of the presentation is you must give the audience a feast. 
your presentation must have a lot of facts your presentation has to share a few examples you could have one or two anecdotes have some data or statistics and most important see whether you can put in some testimonials because if you are otherwise going to make a very dry presentation people may not feel very comfortable always understand what are your frequently asked questions and don't forget to do a mental rehearsal like today morning when i got up at 6:30 for the first 10 minutes i mentally rehearsed the whole presentation that i'm going was going to make here in the evening it's important to have a dress rehearsal when the presentation is very important research shows that if you practice in your performing clothes it builds a greater amount of confidence second on the day of the presentation you don't have to start chasing your wife where is my suit where is my tie where is my shoe where is my sock because you've already practiced the previous night and you've kept all of them ready the next day when you're going to present and most important don't forget to do a time rehearsal to organize your presentation well try to mind map there are some beautiful tools available on the internet on how to structure your presentation through mind mapping so make sure that you use mind map brainstorm all the ideas that you have and i follow a very beautiful practice called spp whenever i have to write an email or i have to prepare an important presentation i first spit out all the ideas from my brain on the paper then i prune those ideas which are not looking so good or relevant to this particular presentation and then finally i polish in other words i sequence what i am going to eventually write so don't try to put everything down perfectly the first time just take a blank sheet of paper write down all the ideas that you have and then decide how you're going to organize them sometimes you can use a chronological approach yeah to say in the 70s this was the problem or this was the solution in 80s we looked at customer satisfaction 90s we looked at customer delight 2000 we looked at customer intoxication sometimes you can use it spatial in bombay we have four offices maharashtra 8 india we have 14 asia we have 72 sometimes you can use a problem solving approach this was my problem these were the causes these were options this was the solution sometimes use a filmy approach i took the solution unfortunately it created some other problem then i identified a second alternative now the problem is sorted out completely so sometimes a little drama in the presentation also helps the audience to understand that you are human okay organize thoughts for flow of ideas don't forget to use acronyms so for example today my mother is 94 years old even if i ask her what are the colors of the rainbow she remembers because she has got that acronym of vidgyor violet indigo blue green so whenever you have an acronym it helps you to explain what you have in an easy way so for example you can start with doctors normally use ist this is the illness these are the symptoms this is going to be the treatment chemical engineers normally use pca this is my product this is my composition these are the applications so every field in the world today has got acronyms and once you use acronyms not only it makes it easier for you to remember the audience is also able to remember it effectively this is the heart of the presentation i always believe if you get this slide right everything else will be right so for the next 2 minutes just give me your full attention you know when i work in the corporate world or i work in business i have two bosses to keep happy two people to keep happy one is Vince boss calls me and says Vincent I want you to do this okay obviously i have to keep him happy would you agree with me but how do i do it i have to ensure that the team is willing to support me and get the job done i have to keep them happy because whenever i ask somebody to do something they will always say w i i f m in other words humko kya milne wala hai what's in it for me so i have to keep my boss happy in terms of meeting his request i have to keep my team happy in terms of making sure that they are going to benefit by doing what i'm asking them to do so whenever you have to prepare a report or you have to make a presentation you must always be very clear about the terms of reference what does my boss expect from me and what does the team gain by listening to me in terms of what i'm going to ask them to do okay so my boss calls me and says vincent you are working in the customer support group in thane there is a sales conference you are supposed to go there and talk about 
all the customer service support that you have given. Now, if I go there and only talk about the organization structure, how hard we are working, how we work six days a week, it's not going to work. But if I'm going to show examples of how certain orders were backed by the sales team with our support and our involvement, then automatically it's going to meet the requirements of my boss. Would you agree with me? So I need to be very clear in terms of the content. A boss says, Vincent, please go and discuss the pension benefits at the orientation program for new employees. What is the boss actually telling me? He is going to tell me, he's telling me, Vincent, make sure that all of them enroll for the program. When you come back, I'm not going to ask you, have you made the presentation? I'm going to ask you, how many enrollments have you got? Ultimately, we are looking for results. Would you agree with me? Yeah, we are not looking for reasons, excuses or effort. Effort is not important. Of course, if the results don't come, I might look at the effort. But for me, effort is irrelevant in today's world. I have to look at results. Okay, boss says, you know, Vincent, we have identified a new gym in the company. I want you to tell all the employees that this gym is going to be inaugurated next week. Okay, and I want you to make a presentation. So I say, boss, very nice. I've seen the gym. It's very nice. I know all the machinery and all which has been installed there. So I go and make the presentation. When I come back, boss is going to ask me, how many commitments have you got from employees that on Monday morning at 7 o'clock, they will be at the gym? If I say, sir, that I did not ask. I thought I was only supposed to showcase that you had some extra money, so you created one gym. <laughs> but beyond that, I did not know what I was supposed to do. So it's very important to understand the purpose. So there are two key words in presentation. One is purpose, because everything in life has to have a purpose. Second is, what are the benefits to the other person? Okay, now boss is telling me, Vincent, please tell the whole team that the sales performance has been down in the last quarter. So what am I supposed to tell the employees? I have to tell them, friends, performance is down 15%. If we don't buck up in the next month, incentive for next year will automatically be zero. In other words, either it has to be a positive benefit or a fear that I'm trying to instill in them as a result of the presentation. Announce a new safety program to comply with legal guidelines. I have to tell my employees, if any employee is found not adhering to all these norms, these are the kind of problems that he is likely to face. Okay, boss says, Vincent, please make, please get approval for proposal to fund a new R&D lab. My R&D manager, D. Ravindra, used to say, please make a proposal. So therefore, when I'm making a proposal, what do I need to do? I have to tell my chairman, Ashok Advani, sir, I need this kind of money. We are going to invest it in this kind of a project. And these are the kind of, this is the kind of sales that we will get as a result of this investment. And because of the sales, these are the profits that we are going to give you. See, for the boss, unless he's able to see the bottom line, he's not going to be excited about the idea that I have. This is the storyboarding technique that you can use, especially when you're preparing a presentation. There are some very beautiful websites that I have identified there for you. Supposing I'm doing a lot of work with a company called Ambuja Cement, and they have a major problem at Batapara. A lot of accidents taking place there because people are not following safety norms. So in my presentation, what will I do? I will tell the CEO, sir, this is the current situation in the plant. This is what is happening at our Ambuja plant, where not a single accident has taken place in the last five years. Okay, This is the state in Batapara. This is the state in Ambuja, our own company, our own plant. This is what we are going to do immediately starting from tomorrow. And this is what we are going to do in three months from now. What is the immediate treatment and what is the treatment that can follow? And sir, any time you visit the plant as a CEO, your first 15 minutes must only talk about safety. It must not talk about production. It must not talk about anything else. Because everybody in the plant must get an idea that safety is number one factor as far as our performance goes. Now, always make sure that you use proper set of numbers. Like for example, don't say in our plant last year we used almost 4,75,000 pieces of paper. Nobody will be able to relate to it. But if I say, friends, you know, last year on an average, each one of us used 45 sheets of paper a day. People will say, that's too much. I think something has to be done about it. 
put some little muscle and data in your presentation. Don't say, a while ago we decided to expand overseas. Much better to say, you know, friends, in June 2018, as a company, we decided to open offices in Kenya and Chad. Yeah, don't use, East Asia will grow a lot in the future. It's always good to say, talk about the source. The World Bank estimates that East Asia will grow at a rate of 8% between 2019 and 2022. Yeah, there has to be some meat, there has to be some muscle in your presentation. Tell me out of the three, which is the best sentence? Third one is the best, right? Green is the best, yeah? First one, even the pune will tell you that a lot of money is being spent because he is giving chai in the room every day, yeah? Second one, you don't need to go there. Thank God he did not say 0.25 paise, yeah? Because you don't have to be that accurate. So this third one is probably the right way to do it. When you step up for delivery, step up with confidence. Don't go like a lazy guy thinking, I don't know why I came here. So go with a little bit of spring in your step. Learn to present. Don't recite, preach or boast. It is not an elocution competition. Make sure that be yourself. Don't try to copy somebody else. You know what happened when Amita Bachchan was so successful in KBC and there were other people who tried to copy his style and were not very successful. So sometimes it is good to develop your own unique style. Avoid false apologies. Never start a presentation by saying, friends, uh, our speaker today or friends, I'm sorry I didn't have any time to prepare. People will say, why the hell did you come? Yeah, so therefore, never ever start with an apology. People are going to feel. And don't use trite expressions. So for example, if you're introducing a speaker, never ever say, our speaker today needs no introduction. People say, then why you come here to introduce him? <laughs> so all these are donkey phrases that were obsolete 30 years ago. So you cannot use words like that. I don't want to stand between you and the speaker. People are fed up with all that language. So therefore, you have to make sure that trite phrases are removed. Use the podium correctly. If you're speaking behind the podium, see that you stand properly. Okay? Don't do what I saw one guy doing. You know, he was hugging the podium so intimately because he was telling the audience, my wife doesn't hug me enough, but this one is really good. And then last month when he was hugging the podium, he also started shaking it. And I said, oh, good Lord, if the podium falls down, then I'll have a problem because he will also fall together. Yeah? So therefore, and podium should be avoided if you can because podium is like a spiritual guru talking behind a lectern trying to give you bhashan, which is not very good. You're always better off trying to be in front of the audience along with them. Yeah? Make sure that you use the microphone correctly. See that you hold it at the right place. Don't keep it too close, otherwise the P's will pop, the S's will hiss. Okay? Make sure that uh, you don't say hello, 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 hello because that people do, will not like. You have to test that half an hour before the audience comes and not use them to give you feedback in the process. If it's a very large audience, keep your friend at the back. So when you start, you know, he just gives you this, like the guy on the tarmac who tells the pilot, everything fine, good luck, now you can take off, yeah? So he just gives you that little signal and you can move on the way, yeah? If you have that microphone which is to be attached over here, please make sure after you finish the speech, you book and put it on the table. I had one guy, I called him for a speech. After his speech was over, he forgot to take the microphone. He went and went into the toilet. Yeah? And then in the toilet, there was pitta patta pitta patta pitta patta. So I went running to tell him, Are, put it off because there is noise coming in the room. Before I could tell him, put it off, he says, this audience today looks very dumb. And they heard it all in the room. See, after he came back from the coffee break, he had a very big problem. Because everybody said, see, since morning we have not understood anything. And he thinks we are dumb. Let him come back, we will set him right. They asked him so many questions that he was not able to progress. So my answer is, you know, technology is great, but you need to use it correctly. Yeah, otherwise, you can create a liability for yourself. To take off in a presentation, always use the ATA formula which they use on the news. Some of you have stopped watching news at night. But they will always say, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the news tonight. That is A, catch the attention of the audience. Then T stands for tell them what you're going to tell them. The headlines for this evening are, then tell them the news in detail. And at the end, to end the news, here are the, here are the main points once again. You remember the news on radio? 
to end the news here are the main points once again and then sometimes the last a stands for motivate them to take some kind of action yeah our eyes curiosity with a catchy statement next week there is a person who is a scientist in this country he is going to visit our institute at brims and he has got the opportunity to change our lives everybody will say sure it is late abdul kalam who is coming yeah so sometimes curiosity sometimes you can start with a humorous story but never ever say let me tell you a joke because if people don't laugh after the joke people will wonder where the joke is yeah so just tell the joke in the normal way if they laugh it's fine if they don't laugh it's also fine but never start by saying and practice the joke first on your wife if she laughs you can guarantee that everybody will laugh yeah if she makes a sad face you can be sure that many of the people may have not understood the joke so there is going to be a problem yeah so there are lots of rules in terms of using humor how to use it effectively so that you make an impact sometimes you can make a very controversial statement which kind of agitates the audience in the beginning to say what does this guy think of it you know and then you know you automatically are able to do it sometimes you can ask a rhetorical question supposing you are doing a program on green environment or pollution your presentation is on pollution so sometimes people will say what do you think is the biggest problem we face in this country so what do you think the audience is supposed to say lack of concern for the environment you know they will not directly say pollution they'll say but indian audience sometimes they try to play a joke on you they'll say population you say population is okay which other problem they say politician no that is also problem which other problem they say there's no other problem <laughs> <laughs> then you are in a very big problem would you agree with me so don't ask a rhetorical question which means a question that really you know is the the answer is known to you the answer is known to them but you're just trying to energize them yeah never ever start by saying as you know the subject of our discussion today is role of the manager people will say vincent three other speakers have used this name introducer has already said don't you have anything better to say please remember in a presentation every second is important so don't repeat things like as you are already aware this is all junk english get to the point straight away and make the presentation i i have a sore throat today and did not have time to prepare people say you shouldn't have come at all it would have been better than wasting our time over here i don't think the subject is very interesting people say then stop speaking let somebody else talk and last of all don't say i'm sorry for the delay in coming here the train was late people will say people who carry trains which carry people like you are always late i wish they had never come only <laughs> yeah so therefore don't give those kind of excuses yeah especially when you are presenting when you end connect with the lead story tell people the advantage if they adopt the solution sometimes you can unite ask not what the country can do for you ask what you can do for the country let's try and solve this problem use a quotation or a provocative question and most important like the cricket commentators do have a punch back last sentence yeah? so when the late tony greg used to end his commentary he used to say friends we've enjoyed presenting this world cup i hope you enjoyed listening to all of us we look forward to your joining us for the indo pakistan series in dubai until then have a nice next two months and see you soon yeah he doesn't say friends the match is over i don't know what you will do even i don't know what i will do so he doesn't go into that kind of apology yeah so you have to end with some kind of energy excitement to show that you are wanting the audience to come back soon visual aids are very very important because after 3 days people are remembering going to remember much much more okay a visual aid helps you to explain and abstract ideas easily and accurately people who use visual aids generally appear more organized it reduces stage fright because sometimes if you are very nervous you can at least just read the slides and feel you have finished your job it involves more senses especially when you are talking to chinese japanese if they don't understand your articulation or your language at least through the slides they will understand what you are talking about and most important it cuts through language barriers but there is a problem with visual aids although it can stimulate interest clarify substantiate and reinforce your message it can overpower speakers who are not very confident also it can be time consuming and reduce your rehearsal time so for example if you have a son at home and you find at 1 o'clock in the morning he is still preparing more and more slides it is better for you to go up to him and say beta 
Now, enough of slides you have prepared. I don't think the boss will allow you to reach there. Whatever you have prepared, at least try to rehearse and make sure that you don't add any more stuff because you might never get there. And you might also make a mess with the earlier slides which you have prepared. This is an important slide. Whenever you prepare a slide, always use the 6 by 6 by 6 rule. A slide should not have more than six lines. Each line must have not more than six words. And you mustn't have more than six textual slides one after the other. A slide must be on for at least 10 seconds, must not be on for more than five minutes. That means two minutes per slide is what is recommended. Always use sentence case. Many of you who have lived in a generation where we used to use those plastic transparencies, where we used to write in all caps, that's not permitted. All caps is the equivalent of shouting. Always use bullets because otherwise you'll be tempted to say, my first point is, second point is, third point is. People say, abhi fourth point is aega. So therefore, don't use numbers. Okay. Always use the landscape format. If you remember, we used to use those OHPs. We used to always use the portrait format. But in PowerPoint, the default is landscape. Use consistent fonts. The only font you're supposed to use in a good PPT is Arial or Tahuma. Arial or Tahoma. It's called a sans serif font. Very clear. Don't use Times New Roman. It doesn't create a good impact. But in this respect, please don't listen to Vincent. Whichever company you work with, each company has created its own template and own guideline of which font is allowed, not allowed. So when I go to corporate companies to do a program, I always tell the HR team to give me their blue book, which has all the guidelines of what fonts are to be allowed. Type size. The content of the slide must be 24 point. The top can be 36. 36, 24 is a good combination even for slides. Make sure there is natural transition. Don't BK behave like school kids. You know, the first slide comes like this, second one comes like this, third slide comes from top, then people say, Abhi niche se aayega. Chalo, das rupiah mila. So they are wondering now where it will come from. So don't get into that kind of naughty business of trying to you know, be too flashy in terms of slide. Sometimes it is good to choose graphs, bar or pie charts, use related pictures. Don't put a picture just for the sake of it. People will wonder what is the connection of the picture with the subject. And select a simple but attractive background. In India, we love white background. Americans love blue background. So, but the contrast has to be there. So if you use white background, you have to use dark lettering. They use blue background with white lettering. So depending on the country I go to, I automatically have to select the slides accordingly. Select the media that provides comfort and confidence. If you are this size of audience, LCD projector is the best. But if there were only three people, I would just make the presentation use of using a whiteboard because then LCD would not be that effective yeah, in terms of doing it. Prepare professionally, see that there are absolutely no errors. So when I make a PPT, I make sure that my wife takes a look at it, runs through the whole presentation, identifies any typographical errors, because one typographical error can show a you in very poor light in terms of your professional capabilities. Yeah? Cue the presentation at the start and breaks. Uh, audience must never see all those boxes together. So make sure that you keep the slide at the right place and then press B, which is blank. And then when you start again, press B again, and again it will start. Yeah? Make sure, friends, that you position yourself correctly. Whenever you're presenting, always stand in this side of the room. Because English language moves from left to right. So although the podium is there, I want, and the podium could not be moved because it is fixed. I had to stand here because that's the better way to be able to present. Use the pointer correctly. Be familiar with how this pointer is to be used because it can help you a lot. And check compatibility with the equipment used. I like Dr. Kelkar who said, Vincent, when you're presenting, please bring your own laptop. Because sometimes there can be mating issues. Would you agree with me? I've used a particular format. That format is not supported. Then there could be all difficulties. So always carry your own laptop along with you so that there is no difficulty. Yeah? Also, the last slide of your presentation should never be a thank you slide. Very often people put thank you and everybody says, thank you, I was waiting for it right from the start. Yeah? The last slide of your presentation should be the title slide. You have to say, friends, that's my presentation on presentation skills. If you now have any questions, I will be happy to answer them if I can. 
In other words, I am not a guru in this world who has all the answers, but I will try to answer them if I can. Yeah, so that's the way to do it. Now, some of you might be working with bosses, so if your boss puts a thank you slide, don't say hopeless fellow. Yeah, <laughs> he needs to go for the presentation. Now, this is not rocket science. Yeah, but I'm just guiding you that this is the good approach. Never use complete sentences on the slide. Your slide must have only phrases. So, for example, don't use the material in red, only use the material in black. The material in red has to come from your mouth. Our, our aim is to be the market leader in the global telecommunications market. Our strategy for achieving the same is to enter into international alliances with countries in Europe and North America. So that is how you make a presentation. You are not a slide reader, you're a slide presenter. This is a noisy slide, no good. The same slide should have been presented this way. To develop a set of specifications which will allow implementation without too much of risk. But be careful, don't go to the other extreme. Don't prepare a slide, specifications, implementation. Words are not allowed, sentences are not allowed. You have to use phrases in order to be able to make an impact. Use color to please, emphasize, differentiate. Always use a font color that is contrasting with the background. When I realize that this is going to be recorded and therefore I cannot put the lights off in the front because otherwise he won't be able to do a good recording, I had to run through my whole slides and change some of the colors that I had used originally because otherwise you would not be able to read what was actually put on the screen. There has to be a contrast effect. Color for decoration is distracting. Don't change color for each point unless it is a KG class kids presentation. And trying to be creative and showing that you have learned all the colors is also quite bad. Always use color with a little bit of gyan. So for example, when I was making presentations on the OHP slide, okay, this was my budget for the quarter, this was actual. If actual was far better than budget, I would put budget in uh, red actual in green to show my chairman Ashok Advani, sir, we have exceeded the target for this month. But if it was the other way around, I <laughs> had to say budget in green, actual in red. So sorry, but we won't make this mistake next quarter. So sometimes you have to use color with a little bit of thinking process. This is not very nice because it looks grand on the screen, but I think if you make all slides like this, people will get a headache. And don't put a monkey there who comes from the top with some big noise. You have not heard the noise because it was not connected, but you know, you would probably get a start if you heard the noise, yeah? Uh, there are some people who might have not slept at night. So if they are sleeping, let them sleep. Why wake them up with that noisy uh, thing which creates a problem for everyone, yeah? Use line charts, bar charts, pie charts, org charts. I think you are all familiar with this, okay? This is like a line chart. This is a beautiful bar chart which all of us are familiar with. Now this data is very difficult to read, but the same data if it was put in this way, it would be more understood. Would you agree with me? So that's the way to show data. Okay, if you look at some of the balance sheets, especially Reliance, you'll see how beautifully they have used graphics and charts to be able to show, you know, the performance, the growth, the plans, and everything that they want to do in the world today. Okay, this is bad because those numbers are too tiny. There is no legend. There is no idea what this graph is all about. This graph is very noisy, too many horizontal lines which are not required. The same graph could have been written like this. Yeah, so this is a better way to show it. Yeah? Not too many lines, more easily understood. Again, if you have numbers, the rule is same. You cannot have more than six rows and more than six columns. So what happens if you have data which is very large? What do you do with that? Don't ever put it on the screen and say, friends, I know you can't read it, but I'm still showing it to you. <laughs> People will feel insulted. You have to take a Xerox of that particular sheet and circulate it and let them hold it in the hand and you only put the highlights on the screen. That's the way a good presenter does it. There is a little bit of effort and homework involved in the entire process. Okay, this is a pie chart which all of you are familiar with. Now, earlier I said, you know, see that all the material comes on the slide at one time. But sometimes it's a good idea to allow it to come one at a time. So supposing I'm showing um, cement manufacturing plant, how it is done. If I show the whole process, flow process diagram, you will get lost. 
So I will start doing it in stages. So similarly, a doctor will say, let me cover the angiogenesis overview. First, we have the basement membrane. Then we have the red blood cells. Now I'm going to show you the endothelial cells. Now what am I doing? Slide is not meant for the presenter. You have to know the slide so well that you are able to speak even before the material comes on the slide. If it doesn't come, your wife will say, Vincent, presentation is not looking good. Please practice again. Practice again until you get it done as well as possible. Basement membrane, smooth muscle, and now we will go to the process of fibroblasts, and that will then ultimately show us the process of angiogenesis. Yeah? So your mouth has to move a little faster and earlier than what is going to be shown on the screen because then you are in control of the entire presentation. Once you create a presentation, there is a very beautiful space on Google called Google Images. Have you heard of it? You can download all these ready-made images and just put it in your PPT. You don't have to have an artist to create all this. You just have to go to images and download all the ones that can be used. As long as you're not selling your presentation for money, there wouldn't be a copyright issue as far as you know using some of those presentations is concerned. Okay, second last part of the presentation. Questions are always asked to clarify doubts, which is okay. Questions are used to get additional information, which is okay. Questions are used to appreciate the speaker, which is also okay. Questions are used to express a different point of view, which is also okay. Questions are sometimes asked because the person wants to impress other people in the room, which is also okay. Why should you be the only fellow impressing people? So don't get hassled in case somebody asks you a question which is for a reason where it is. And you know, when making a presentation, if you know there is a guy who is an authority on the subject, it's a good idea to go up to him and say, Dr. Kelkar, I feel honored that you are here with me. Okay, uh, would you like to s take a small part of the presentation? Would you like to say a few words before I start? Please feel free to interrupt me. Is there any segment that you would like to talk to the audience about? And most often, like my bosses have been for my training courses, including Mr. Dixit, he used to say, Sir Vincent, I've only come to learn. Don't worry that I'm in the audience watching you. That was a different role yeah, when you were my subordinate. Yeah, so the thing is that it's very important to be able to do it right. Yes, 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 yes. So there are some things which you must never say in the Q&A. Never say, your question is not clear. Always remember, you is a bad word, especially when you're giving bad news. Always use the word I. I am sorry, I have not understood your question. I am sorry, I have not been able to, you know, find an answer that will probably fit your query at this point of time. Always use the word I. When you're giving good news, always use the word you. You will be happy to know that your promotion letter will be issued tomorrow. You will be happy to know that your suit will be ready tomorrow. Good news always you, bad news always starts with I. I am sorry, I have not understood your question. Could you please articulate it a little differently? Don't say obviously. People will think you are challenging my intelligence. Don't say as I have covered earlier. People will say then why you are covering again? Okay. Don't use aggressive tone and body language. See, in a presentation, you can fire on all cylinders. But you are in the Q&A, you must have the most emotionally intelligent team member who will handle the Q&A. So even if there's a mistake made by one of the other speakers, the chairperson who is the Q&A speaker will say, I would like to correct that perception. What he said was correct, related to a particular kind of industry. But I would agree with what you're saying that this may probably not work over there. Don't grade a question. When somebody asks a question, never say excellent question. Somebody else will say, Hamne pucha tha, excellent nahi tha kya? <laughs> So never ever ever say excellent question. Unless you are in your own company where you think there's a rabbit of an employee who has never opened his mouth for the last 10 years and today first time he said something, you might like to say very good question so that the other rabbits also open their mouth the next time. Yeah? But otherwise, don't grade question. Just answer. Sometimes you can say that's a valid question or that's a question that I get very often, but don't get into excellent question because very often people say answer nahi aata hai. That's why he's saying excellent question to massage his ego so that he doesn't ask another question after that. Yeah. 
don't use off the record statements especially when you are uh, making a press presentation don't say not to quote me because they will actually quote you and then you are going to be in big trouble first of all you are not allowed to present your company without the permission of the people in the organization especially talking to the press don't uh, if it is an irrelevant question don't say that's an irrelevant question say because we are just short of time is it okay if i take it at the break is it okay if we meet online but don't use the word irrelevant most important remember that to be a good presenter you must be positive in terms of your intent you must be prepared you must be smart in terms of whether to answer it in this way or answer it in that way and a lot of sales people understand what should be told to the customer or not yeah so for example if you go to buy a flat from a builder the builder will never say come sir come please sit last 6 months not a single customer has come yeah <laughs> he will never say that because then you are going to feel very funny to have come here there and now feel like a bakra in the whole situation yeah so you have to be smart in terms of what you say and what you don't say most importantly be attentive because very often when a person is asking a question you are planning the answer and then you may not really get the wind of the question and most important be brief because otherwise people say vincent we asked you the time you told us how to build a watch so always answer in two or three sentences don't like ms dhoni answer so long that the reporter is saying now let me ask the next question here because i have three four questions but this answer of yours is not getting over only yeah so don't be somebody like that in terms of effect yeah ex tempo always have an attitude ready attitude of mind if i were if i am a part of lions club and i am going to see my friend in another lions club when i go there people will say friends please uh, this is vincent from lions club of wadala or rotary club of wadala and then he will straight away say vincent would you like to address this group you cannot say no 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 i just came like that only you know so you have to always be prepared that people are going to catch you ask you to say a few words like for example when i go for weddings in my community i always carry a toast in my pocket because there is likely to be a situation where the bride or the groom will come to me and say vincent sorry yeah that toast master has got lost somewhere because of traffic now can you just come up and say a few words now if i say no 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 i'm sorry i've never done it i can't do it it's going to be a little bit of a problem for everyone yeah so always be prepared is a good mantra a wet red mind is an asset don't have to make too many points just limit the number of points you have to make sometimes if you are working in a corporate company the hr guy will suddenly come and say friend can you just come and give a thank you speech vincent has finished it now you start thinking oh no so many people were there why did he catch me but when you come up to speak you have to only say three sentences friends you know we have come to the end of this beautiful presentation made by vincent on your behalf no you have to say i'm sure all of you found the presentation to be very educative very thought provoking and very stimulating you must find three adjectives yeah uh, on your behalf i would like to thank vincent and i wish him all the best and hope we can attend some of his other courses in the future you just have to make it short don't say friends when we started at 5:30 people will say now forget it because some people in bombay are already waiting like this you know <laughs> to run out so <laughs> if you give a very long thank you speech people are going to feel quite upset about it so you have to in three sentences close the speech and do it as effectively as possible yeah think of a small example or anecdote if you can fit it in 20 seconds always super plan the starting and the ending of any speech okay giving a speech is like driving a plane the first few minutes for the pilot and the last few minutes for the pilot are most critical that's why i always tell presenters always learn by heart the first two sentences you're going to speak and learn by heart the last two sentences you're going to speak because that's what is going to create an impact and always be positive and optimistic probably say this hr head decided that i was the best suited for this otherwise he would have never selected me yeah so if he has the confidence i also feel i have the confidence i will be able to do it yeah last slide when you have to make a team presentation always have a leader who will hold the event together make sure that you use everybody's ideas so that people are in sync with the message decide on a meaning role meaningful role for all don't carry some people along with you whose job is to say next slide please next slide please next slide please yeah, never do that narayan murthy used to get very upset you know whenever he used to see 
manpower getting wasted just to click the slide because you know i want to show see my team is there even i have a slide clicker in the company yeah so you have to be careful that you are fairly independent and you don't use all that yeah make sure that you practice plan to handle disaster scenarios because if five of us have to speak and all of a sudden at the last minute he falls sick and is not able to come somebody else must be able to take his part i cannot say that middle fellow has not come so that part we will leave out people will not feel very happy about it yeah clarify the choreography what does it mean if five of us have to present and he is the first second third fourth we have to sit in that particular order to show that it was extremely well planned and coordinate the materials for professionalism means all the material should be put on one ppt the first fellow cannot say now he will remove his laptop now i will put my laptop it shows that we are so secretive about our data and information that even among colleagues we don't trust each other with what we have created yeah and the most important thing is friends remember this the impression that the group makes as a whole is far more important than the performance of one particular person by each person presents individual members need to pay attention to everything that is said and be interested in each other's responses what does that mean so the moment the first person has finished his presentation he has to go and sit down he has to face the screen he has to sit at an angle of 70 degrees and show that his body mind heart and soul are in the presentation he cannot take his phone and start seeing which miss calls he got he cannot poke his friend there saying ye to nahi chalne wala hai because people are going to be watching that fellow the the kind of expression they make in fact when the speaker is speaking these other guys should be nodding you know as if to say this is absolutely correct this is the kind of success we have got etc etc not make any monkey face which kind of creates confusion for other people because the audience is also watching the team apart from watching what the speaker at that particular point is talking yeah so friends that is very broadly what i had to cover i hope i have given you some insight if you have some questions i will be happy to answer them yeah. yes we used to make presentation earlier in our corporate life <laughs> i real whenever we used to make presentation in our earlier corporate life uh one point uh, we overlooked is knowing the audience because similar information once you have to present to a board of directors and similar presentation is to be presented to some other group of people so uh, what what is your yeah yeah it's very important see if you don't make that effort let's say for example i am going to a management school one of bombay's best management school at villa parle okay and they many years ago they want a plain paper copier a xerox machine now when i go there to be and i work for a company which sells xerox machine suppose now if my presentation is on friday the previous week i need to go to that institute meet the registrar of the college and say dr vani you know i've come here Uh, i understand there is a need can you tell me and share with me a little bit of the challenges that you face and he says yeah yeah there is a lot of problem you know actually when we send the paper out to xerox ashok xerox the spoon doesn't come back for the like next 2 hours and last year month you know one paper went out it got lost at that shop and sometimes the paper comes back with that kerosene smell so i make a list of all the problems yeah now when i'm making a presentation i automatically know i also do my homework and find out okay who is going to be there the head of finance is going to be there the head of marketing is going to be there the institute director is going to be there maybe the institute's director secretary is also going to be there i need to go to linkedin like for example i didn't do this because i thought dr kelkar might think i'm a little too intrusive and i want to carry his members to the other chambers where i'm also a part of but otherwise i always insist please give me a name list of all the people there i do a little bit of linkedin you know evaluation so that i am in sync with what is required now in this case after i get this data i now go to the college and i say director good morning thank you for your time professor marketing professor finance before i start the presentation uh, i want to i have a question do uh, do you have any problem as far as plain paper copying in the college goes 
who will speak first marketing guy he is always talkative fellow he will say uh, yeah yeah we have a lot of problem finance guy says there is no problem because he is always fe conjuice fellow no <laughs> he doesn't want to invest in anything yeah the director is like watching saying that these monkeys are always fighting and i <laughs> have this problem over here now automatically i know i say sir i agree that sometimes there can be no problem but there is another institute like yours which had a problem and somehow the other they were not able to handle it effectively immediately marketing guys what is the problem i said no paper was going out no it was not coming back quickly finance guy says my paper is like that only <laughs> okay then another problem occurred some months ago one paper went out for copying it got lost it was a very critical paper so now the two fellows are smiling at each other saying that this looks like our circus also yes so we better get it so the amount of effort you make in doing your homework very effectively understanding not only the personal profile of the person and if there is a chance you can build some kind of rapport and relationship but in addition to discovering what are the pain areas so that you present it in an effective way is very important i feel very sad when i go to some business schools in india in bombay there's a school at kalina university and you know i go there sometimes to learn i don't go to te teach i go there because some speaker is called to make a presentation so i say why don't i go and learn there so i go there as usual the speech is the the program is supposed to start at 2 but it doesn't start till 2:45 So then I am standing there and I start interacting with the director. So the director says, "Oh, you're Vincent. I heard about you, uh, sir. We have a problem in this college. You know, all our children in this college they hate sales. You know, and the problem is companies which are coming to our company only want sales people. Now I don't know, don't know what to do. Now I say, madam, I think you know we have to change that perception because in another five years from today, there are only two departments that will survive in business. One is sales." and the other is sales support all other departments will be taken over by ai and technology so if you are allergic to sales i think it's going to be a major problem would you agree with me and today which is the best industry to work in as far as sales is concerned maybe fmcg industry so even if you graduate from the best business school in the country like i am ahmedabad bangalore calcutta or isb for the first 5 or 10 years you're not going to have a marketing job you are going to be in the rural market you are going to be in sales and if you cannot demonstrate success there then your credibility at higher levels are going to be very very tough would you agree with me there's only one industry where people don't start at the sales level and that could be the consulting industry because the consulting industry what happens the person who has to sell projects it runs into several crores would you agree so that only the partner the top people will go and meet you know the business owners who are running large establishments etc and you are involved in the implementation process but again you can't hide for too long because everybody wants to be promoted would you agree with me so from associate you become consultant from there you move to the next level to level some level some day you will reach reach that level so at some point of time you have to achieve mastery in terms of being able to present yourself very very effectively and present your ideas very effectively and all those aspects become very important yeah any other thoughts any other questions anything else that you'd like to ask yes yeah 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 sure 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 correct yeah yeah some some videos are good like for example if i send you links of two three a uh, few videos and you can see more there you will really love it especially for public speaking and presentation skills because you can get a few ideas from there so it has to, it has to be yeah 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 it has to be not more than 3 to 4 minutes now for example in my training programs you know my fee to a corporate company is 1 lakh of rupees per day for training courses okay so now if i'm going to charge them 1 lakh and i know trainers are charging even more than that but if i'm going to charge 1 lakh per day i cannot show them a youtube video because they will say that we could have watched on our own no so therefore i have invested some of the videos that i have taken from the best business schools abroad i have invested something like 20 25 lakhs you know in in getting those videos and those videos are highly copyrighted so they cannot be just circulated anywhere around but it creates a great experience for people who have actually watched it so therefore people are willing to 
pay you money provided you do the right investment in terms of the value they will get out of the entire experience yeah so some videos are nice you have to be very selective yeah you have to be very selective yeah yeah yes yeah 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 very good yeah sure yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct. Sure. There is a lady called Shade Zarai. I don't know if you have you have ever watched a video of hers, videos of hers. She is a fantastic person. She is a beautiful dancer, uh, one of the world's best dancers. But if you see her videos and her presentation, some of them are just forty seconds, but it rocks the world. It rocks the world. Shade Zarai. Shade is S H A D E. A D. Just make a note of it. Some of you. I'll send you it, the link. Yeah? Shade. S H A D E. When you go home today, don't forget to look at this. Yeah? Just type Shade. S H A D E. Shade Zarai. Z A H R A I. 